what is going on kid family welcome back to the channel on today's video check it out we're working on the l61 head and it's time to reinstall all these engine components into this head so let's get started all right guys so it's been a while since the last video on the l61 motor essentially we took our time with this whole process we cleaned up all the components of the engine here the intake valves everything was sludged up and looking very very bad from this abandoned gm ecotech l61 motor now for this video we're going to be reinstalling everything back onto the head now this is all a learning process for me this is my first time messing with a head it took some time to realize how everything works here but i got the gist of it and i'm contemplating what am i doing with this motor am i rebuilding it am i learning on it am i going through the motions and whatnot and i was stuck at one point where i was deciding whether or not i should lap these valves and what lapping valves means it's pretty much you're using a compound and sanding these surfaces right here so then your valve seat right here is going to sit perfectly flush on that surface and it's a nice sealed surface now the compound and whatnot it doesn't cost too much it's like 20 to 30 bucks there's a coarse compound and a light compound but the work takes forever if you're doing it by hand and that's what most people recommend doing by hand and you know what at this point honestly the the, the odds of me running this engine anywhere are slim to none and i'm just gonna skip that step altogether i did use a scotch bright pad to clean the, these edges up again the valves are cleaned up currently they do have minor pinning on them on the exhaust valves as you guys can probably see from previous videos again we clean them up check out the playlist if you are new to the channel but we're gonna skip that step we're gonna assume it's gonna at least seal half decent for anyone else that's gonna be running the motor later so I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking right now we're gonna start doing some work trying to reassemble everything and we'll go from there. All right, so first we got the valve guides right here that we're gonna be reinstalling. We clean these up. And the way I'm gonna install them is first, I'm gonna place them in the location, kind of push it in. And then I'm gonna take a socket that goes over it perfectly and just lightly tap it right there and that is sealed all the way down so just repeat the whole process for all the valve guides be careful not to hit any of the surfaces that are machined you'll be good to go here Right in this point, we're going to be assembling the rest of these parts onto the top surface of the cylinder head. As you can see, 
the valves are going through the valve seats. Everything is working properly right now. I put that tape on the bottom just so they don't push out if they were going to. And let's continue reassembling this. All right, so right here we got the valve spring, the retainer, and the little keepers that we have to install on every single valve here in order so the valve stays in place. And if you guys haven't been watching, I created this magnificent masterpiece this was my first time welding i used a harbor freight titanium flux 125 welder that we picked up just to make this tool and essentially this tool is a jacking um, from a jack stand just put this little piece in there and that's going to help us pretty much compress the top hat and the spring in order to install the keepers through that little hole right there and that's the way we took them off that's the way we're going to reinstall it so let's get this put back on the rig where this whole thing is going to work and install these valve springs and all these retainers and again i got everything numbered here i'm trying to go and do this thing the most accurate way as i possibly can all right we got the head in the location this is the block if you guys are new check that out we're going to be tackling this as soon as we finish assembling the head i didn't want to take apart the head and the block and then just have a really hard time putting everything back together so i tackled from what i believe is the harder part which is the head since it was newer to me so let's finish that up man i got that nice valve cover right there chilling i can't wait to reinstall it but let's put these valves on right now put that retainer on top now let's see the spring compressor in action. The tip with installing this li these little keepers is to essentially put some grease on them. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And let's see, here goes nothing. We're going to try to install them one by one, I believe. All right, we need a toothpick or something. This is gonna be a little challenging. Got the second one in. And there you go, guys. Everything is nice and tight. Valve seats are seated perfectly fine. So this whole process is probably gonna take a little bit. So let's put you on a time lapse here. Alright, and after a little bit of time, we got all the valve springs and retainers installed perfectly and properly. This is probably the most time consuming phase of the whole thing. Those little keepers are a little tricky to get back into home base, but that's done. So right now we have the hydraulic lifters and the rollers, which we will be installing into these grooves. Now these are all the oil passages where the oil travels through to give pressure to the hydraulic lifter and that actually adjusts the valve lash adjustment. It's a hydraulic valve lash adjustment, self-adjusting compared to my Honda right there that we just manually adjusted the valves on a previous video. And I'm telling you, I did that valve adjustment and the car runs much better. But in something like this with hydraulic adjustments, you don't really have to worry about valve adjusting until something goes sour.
So I had these cans just sitting out for a while. So I just want to lubricate the seats a little bit. And there's some etching going on on the, on the actual surface here. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Same here. If you guys can see what's going on here. But uh, there's a lot of wear it seems like on some of these. And on this one here, I can kind of feel the grooves right here. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect performance, but uh, I'll lube it up just a little bit here, wipe it down, and then we'll grease it up before we reinstall these. Putting in a little bit of uh, synthetic grease, just a dab. It's probably not the best and ideal thing. I don't have a thick oil, the thickest oil I have is probably a 20 weight. You could probably get away with just running a 1040 or 2050 weight oil, or just buy a dedicated assembly lube. On this intake side we do have a longer camshaft so we are gonna lubricate this here all right this is what we are looking at we got everything ready to go let's pop these camshafts in and keep going forward Perfect. As you can see, this camshaft is way longer and it drives something. I'm not exactly sure what exactly it drives, but there is a dual purpose for this specific uh, camshaft. So now I'm going to lubricate the top surfaces of the cam and we'll put the cam caps back on. Got the camshaft caps. Lube it up a little bit here. little bit of scarring there and you know I'm always intrigued because the the camshaft just have a machine surface there's no bearings whereas the bottom end of the block has bearings so let me know in the comments below how come they don't just put bearings in a head and then you could that way you can just replace the bearings on the camshaft and call it good why is it the way it is let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, so the camshaft caps have numbers and arrows, and we're pointing them towards the camshaft. So this is number one. We're gonna place it right in there, following it by number two. And again, making sure all the arrows point to the correct orientation. Don't put it in this way with the arrow facing this way. Turn it around pop it in and the most important thing here is going to be the torquing process there was a specific sequence to remove these in order so you don't flex the camshaft and the camshaft doesn't break or cause any stress on the camshaft and there's also a specific sequence to torque it which I'll show you guys right now once we finish putting these caps on 
All right, guys, disregard what I said. The head bolts have a torque sequence removal and installation. The cam caps, um, actually, I think last time I did, I just re-loosened all of them simultaneously, slowly. And for tightening them, we'll do the same thing. We'll just tighten them slowly, one turn at a time. And we'll probably start from the inside and work our way outside. Now this is a hit or miss. I've done some research online. Some people say start from the outside, work your way inside, start from the inside, work your way outside. But as long as you go slowly and don't tighten this one all the way so it kind of causes tension on the camshaft, you shouldn't have any problems. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So for this one, I'm just gonna start off from here and uh, do one turn at a time, work my way out. All right, it's time to torque this sucker down. I'm using just the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh torque wrench, $10 with coupon. Probably not the most accurate. It's 89 inch pounds. So I converted 89 inch pounds to foot pounds and we are talking about 7.4 pound feet of torque. So we got that set up as close as we can right there. And we're just gonna torque it all down right now. Alright guys, and that's pretty much done. Everything is installed, the camshafts are installed. Now one thing I wanna mention, this torque wrench sucks. Absolutely terrible. I think this torque wrench starts off at five pounds. And honestly, if you use this, anything under 15 to 20 pound feet of torque, the feeling of this, it doesn't click. It's garbage, absolute garbage. And it, exactly, you get what you pay for. And no, I would not use a $10 torque wrench on a real motor that I'm rebuilding that I know where the engine works. Again, I'm just going try, trying to go through the motions and plenty times, time and time again, I notice and I realize if you go cheap, you get shitty results, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I just hand tighten all these right now and I'm gonna use a real torque wrench that I'm gonna probably borrow from Bullets Garage in order to torque these down to 7.4 pounds. And on that note, guys, this is gonna be approaching the end of the video a very the time consuming part was actually cleaning all of these things taking everything apart and yeah cleaning all the valve springs all the retainers the block the head took forever to clean pressure wash and i'm pretty proud of where everything is right now again these right here indicate that the cams are in top dead center so at this point what i'm going to do let's turn this puppy over we can take this tape off that we previously used to secure the valves from flying out and as you can see let's turn this upside down for you guys And as you guys can see, everything is becoming a nice total package right here. We cleaned the hell out of these valves. They look much, much better. If I had a small Dremel, I'd probably take off some of the carbon in the combustion chamber, but it's okay. And you can see some of the valves are opening again because again, the valve overlap is real. Other than that, guys, I it took me about 10 to 15 hours altogether probably cleaning this head just cleaning the valves cleaning the head and whatnot 
it's very time consuming if you're trying to do things like this yourself but at the end when i put it back together and i'm surprised i remember how i put it back together because i started taking everything apart months ago it was still winter now it's midsummer but yeah that's done so the most important thing right now we're gonna take this valve cover that we painted clear coated came out beautiful we're gonna lock it in just so it doesn't get all that contamination and dirt falling into the open head We freed up a bunch of space right now and the next thing that we are going to be doing is tackling the long block right over here eventually slowly we'll get to it we'll take everything apart we'll check the rods the bearings everything's gonna go so stay tuned make sure you subscribe to the channel for gm ecotech content i'll catch y'all guys on the next video thanks for watching Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel to support your boy. Peace. We'll see you on the next time. What the fuck am I talking about? We'll see you on the next one, boys. I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'ma do it all for you. Come along and see it's true. But the